Today we're going to take a look at something called an MCP server for FNO. So it's the Dynamics 365 ERP MCP server. And just I've been playing around with it for about a week now, um, trying things out, and it really does level up what we've been able to do before. It really makes um, automation inside of FNO possible with Copilot now. Really finally gotten to that point with this MCP server. So I'm not going to go into great depth about what an MCP server is here, but just think of it as kind of a connector to data for a large language model. So it kind of sits in between the, your data source, which in, in our case is going to be Dynamics, and um, Copilot or your large language model it sits in between there. And it basically interprets you know, what tools are available in the, in the data source, you know, what, what data is there. It just kind of gives us a plug-in. I, I saw somebody online refer to it as kind of a USB uh, port for, for software. You just basically plug your large language model into it and it knows what it can do for, as far as tools and data with that, with that server. So that makes it really powerful on the dynamic side because now not only can we do data and access data, we can actually uh, initiate actions. So one of the examples I'll go through here in a little bit is you know we can confirm POs, we can confirm, we can submit things to workflow all without really any con any configuration other than just telling the large language model what to do. We're not, you know, I'm not going in and setting up tables like we had to do before. You know, initially on Copilot, we had to tell it, you know, what tables we're going to use and that sort of thing. But now it's just setting up the one MCP server and it knows what the data is. So it's very, very powerful. So what I want to take you through here today is we're going to take a look at some simple queries that we've, we've been able to do that before, but I just want to kind of show you how it works. Um, and then we're going to go into more complex thing where we're creating header and line records, and then kind of we're going to kind of wrap up with the being able to create um, header and line records and be able to execute an action like press a button. So we're going to show I'm going to show you how to how to do all that. I'm also going to show you kind of the setup. Realistically, what I'm showing you in my examples here in a little bit is going to be through the Copilot sidecar, but you probably wouldn't be using that. I'm just using that for demo. You'd probably more be using this for automations. I'm, I'm not, you can, as a user, inter interact with it and type stuff into it, but I, I really see this being more powerful for uh, setting up automations. And I'm, I'm hoping to kind of dig deeper into that in later videos and kind of show how we can do some automations with this, with this stuff now, uh, now that we have this capability. So let's go th walk through a couple of examples real quick and uh, see what this thing can do. What I decided to do was to use the sidecar experience to kind of demonstrate and test the different uh, scenarios on this. So the way you set that up is if you go into Agents in Copilot Studio and find your Copilot for Finance and Operation apps, we can click on that. And the MCP server is a tool. So I, I added this MCP server to, to enter my tools. When you go look for MCP servers, you see another one that's basically the exact same uh, name, except it doesn't have preview on it. This one, my understanding, is going to be deprecated. This was an earlier version of it. It does have some tools in it, but doesn't have nearly the capability of this new one for preview. So you can put them both in. Uh, it doesn't matter, but um, that this is the one that you definitely want to look at, the one with preview. I've, I've left mine in. Notice I've just turned it off, so they're not, they're not, neither one of these two tools that I have in here are going to affect it. The other thing you want to do is if you go to overview, and this is in the instructions that Microsoft provided, is you want to change the agent model. I think by default right now it's uh, chat GPT 4.1. They're suggesting chat GPT 5. So you just click on the ellipse and click edit and you can go and edit that agent model. The other thing that is also in the instructions are uh, uh, the direction, the Microsoft Learn site are the instructions for this. So there are instructions. I've just copied and pasted these directly from the Learn site um, that are there. So I would suggest you do that as well. That definitely makes it work better. Okay. Now let's go over to FNO and I've got the site sidecar turned on. And we'll just start off with a very simple. Uh, example and, the, and this is some of the some of the things you've been able to do before, but I'll just kind of show you it still works. Um, let's see, can can you uh, show me items with cable in the name? So this is going to just show you uh, what the uh, the model can access as far as the data. Now it looks like you know it can access customers, items, release products, and remember I didn't set anything up on the MCP server. It it knows that knows where to go find that data and goes and looks for it. 
Um, and I will mention here, I'm going to go and I'm going to speed up a lot of these. So I'll, when I, when you see things speeding up, I am speeding it up just to kind of make it go a little bit faster here uh, as far as the video. So there's the query that it returns. You know, it listed some items that has some cables in the name. So there's a list of those items. You can also check for on hand. Uh, so what what is my on hand for item A001? And let's just see what it returns there. Okay. So it shows me by warehouse what, what my, my different availability is. So I've, at 11, I've got physical uh, available of 1,000 units, sorry. So those two things show you kind of some things that you could do before by hooking Dataverse tables into FNO. They're definitely much easier and you have a much more wider breadth of the data you can access. So let's go into some things that were not very easy before. Um, so let's, let's take an uh, example of a transfer order. Let's just say I want to create a transfer order from warehouse 11 to uh, warehouse 24. So you can do that. So let's just say create a transfer order from warehouse 11 to, to warehouse 24 for item A001 for a quantity of 10 pieces. Let's see what it does with that. Again, before this was not very easy to do, or I maybe you guys found it easy to do. I could, I did. It wasn't very easy for me to to figure out how to do this um, with the native with the native connectors that we have. But with the MCP server, it's is definitely much easier because again, I've done no setup to actually make this work. I'm just telling it what I need to do. Okay, so it tells me it's created a uh, transfer order number uh, 007. So let's go take a look at that. Let's go to um, inventory management and we'll go to transfer order. It did create the transfer order. Let's just see here. Okay, now, so this is a problem or, a, or an issue that I've seen that, that there, I did finally figure out a workaround, but I did struggle a long time. I can't tell you how long I struggled trying to figure out what was going on here. Because if I query, um, Copilot now and asked it, you know, what items are on this 007, it will say this item's there, but it's obviously not there. So what I found kind of as a workaround, can you save the record? And let's just see if it'll save it. And again, I struggle with this quite a bit, just to be honest with you, trying to figure out what was going on with this. Okay. So it says it saved it. Let's just go ahead and refresh it and see if we get, so see now that it saved the line, I can see the line. So there, this is this came, I, this came up quite a bit when I was testing this. I couldn't figure out what was going on there. Okay, so I've got a transfer order. I've got a line on my transfer order. It's created this for, for me. Okay, another thing you can do. Let's just create a purchase order for the same item. For so for vendor one double oh one for item A triple oh one for where for site one warehouse. 11 for a quantity of 10 pieces. And I've had mixed results with this. Let's just see, sometimes this works pretty well, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I have to do the save. Uh, sometimes I have to go and tell it to add a line to it. So let's just see what, what it comes up with here on the... And I do think that adding uh, clear instructions for each of these, you know, when, when creating a transfer order, here are your instructions for creating a, a, a purchase order, here are your instructions. So it does save it, it does add the lines, it does ask for anything that's required. Um, you know, just been playing around with it for a week here. I mean, you, you definitely would, would want to kind of add more structure to this. Okay, so it tells us it created PO206. Let's go ahead and take a look at that there. So if we go and find uh, procurement sourcing purchase orders, we should see PO206. Okay, so I don't have a line there. Let's see, okay. So this one, it did not actually add the lines, I just noticed that. So so this is what I'm saying. So let's just say, if, can you add a line for item A001, uh, site one, warehouse 11 for a quantity of 10 pieces. And just kind of walking you through some of the challenges I've seen, some of the different um, things I've seen with it. it. It is really pretty amazing at how this works, and this can just interpret what you're saying and and create these things. So, not not digging on it, but it's it's pretty uh, 
you have to be kind of pretty specific with it. Okay, so let's see, uh, let's see if it saved that line. We'll hit refresh again. So it did. So let's just say, can you save the line? There we go. Okay, let me hit refresh. Okay, and now we have our line on there for our A triple one for quantity of ten. Now the coolest thing that I think out of all of this is I have access to buttons now. So to confirm this purchase order, I would go to purchase order and confirm, but I can actually have Copilot do it, right? So let's see, can you confirm? So I, I've tried this on a couple of different things. The purchase order com confirmation works. I also can su submit different things to workflow. So I, earlier I'd create a purchase requisition. I was able to submit that to, to workflow. Uh, the one thing I'll note there is it did submit it to Workflow, but it didn't know, like, if you've ever submitted anything to Workflow, you know, you hit Workflow, and then it asked for a comment and then a submit. I actually had to go back when, when I, it came back and said it submitted to Workflow, but I noticed that it never showed going to Workflow. So I, I, I'm not sure exactly how I did it or figured out that it, but what was happening is there was, the comment was showing up and it was sitting there with, waiting on the comment and waiting for a submit. So I just, I said, hey, put a, put in a comment, hit submit. And as soon as it did that, it immediately went into the workflow. So it was, it was pretty cool there. Uh, it's actually kind of following the process. So there it is, it's confirmed. I've had Copilot do, do the confirmation for you. Okay, so you can see that there is a lot of capability here that we can do. We, you know, we can, that actions, being able to press buttons and, and execute actions in Dynamics is a huge thing. Uh, for automation that we that we can do now that just we really we we could kind of do it before but not really not without some dev typically uh, There wasn't a lot of actions that we could use so that really opens up a, a lot of uh, Variety of things we can do now. So I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with this as you saw in the video I left kind of the, the bugs and in, you know left it in there worse and all so you can just see You know what you have to deal with and, and kind of the workarounds that I found I've just started playing with this. There may be, you know, better workarounds. I'm sure there are, you know, so if you find things, comment below, let me know what those are. Cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to learn um, as well as you are, right? So, you know, just if you find other workarounds that I'm not seeing, please comment below. I'd love, love to hear from you. Also, if you want to comment, tell me your experiences with it, love to hear them. Um, but this to me looks like a, like a pretty step, far step up ahead of what we had before. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. See ya.